Hi, welcome to a new video, and we are back with Gran Turismo 7. And by the way, if throughout this video you can hear a slightly strange noise, it's because I have a kitten asleep on me at the present moment. So, there we go. I'm not going to move the kitten. Live with the burring. Um, so, what we've got in update 1.17 for Gran Turismo 7, the headlines around this are basically that they've added three new cars, and I'll come on to those in a moment, and Watkins Glen amongst other things. Now, I'm going to start with Watkins Glen. Uh, this is one of my favourite North American circuits in sim racing, full stop. I absolutely love it as a track. I think it's got a brilliant flow. It is fairly high speed. It is an old school track. It's got some really good elevation changes in it, and, and I love both the short and the long layout variants of it. And we get both of those in Gran Turismo 7. Slightly frustratingly, if I'm going to nitpick, it would have been nice for them to include the layouts that don't have the inner loop chicane on the back straight. I mean, after all, it, it's fully modelled. You just move the chicane barriers and you've got another two track layouts on there, you know. So it, it's not as though it would have been a huge amount of work to get that done. So there we go. Um, so, what do I think overall of Watkins Glen in Gran Turismo 7? It's a nice recreation of it. I mean, it still suffers from the issue all Gran Turismo tracks pretty much suffer from, but I'm not sure whether that's a track mesh issue, a force feedback issue, or a physics issue, and that is it feels unnervingly smooth pretty much no matter what you drive on there. But as far as an accurate recreation of Watkins Glen goes, yeah, it's absolutely great and we do get three races at the Glen um, added to the race events so you go to the track as is GT7's really weird way of doing things you go to the track and you've got three races there one on the short layout and two on the long layout but that's it for curated stuff there and we've then got three cars now to say this is an odd bunch would be an understatement. So what we've got is a Ford 1932 Roadster. So this is effectively a hot rod converted off of a 1932 Ford Roadster. We get the return of um, an icon from Gran Turismo, which is the Suzuki V6 Escudo Pikes Peak Special. And then finally, we get the Suzuki Vision Gran Turismo Group 3 variant. So we've got three cars. There's no real discernible theming put in place here, and one of them arguably is just a Group 3 version of the car they released in the last update, which was the Suzuki uh, Vision Gran Turismo car. Now, that one feels a little cheap, to say the least, but my main issue with them is they've done absolutely nothing with them. None of these three events at Watkins Glen are themed around these cars in any way shape or form and we do have some new menu books that have been added three menu books have been added to um, the game in this version um, one where you collect variations of the Toyota 86 so um, AE86 GT86 GR86 etc um, another one where you collect three Honda Type R's and another where you collect three rotary engine cars from Mazda and I use the term collect there quite literally because there are no races associated with these new menu books at all none you don't race this is simply you go and buy the cars well, that's it. Uh, some of you may open these up and bingo, you've already got um, the roulette ticket or the award for these. Um, so they put three menu books in, they don't even bother theming them around the cars they've added into the DLC. I mean, this is... It's lazy, it's short-sighted, and to be perfectly honest, it's a bit insulting to the player base. It's kind of like, oh, here you go, have this, minimum viable effort. And that seems to be a reoccurring theme around a lot of what's going on with Gran Turismo at the moment, is a lot of it smacks of minimum viable effort. It really does. And while I don't like compare and contrast, I'm going to do it anyway, because we've just had some DLC released for Grid Legends. Now, it's got its own issues, it's not immune to that, but if you look at it, they put out a pack which is themed, it has curated events against it, they've incorporated it into the story mode, they've even gone and re-recorded some of their faux documentary type footage 
with real actors and put some effort into this. You know, the, the DLC might not be for everybody, but at least they bothered to curate it, to put it into some context within the game, rather than just throwing some cars at the game, throwing a track at the game, and going, oh no, we're not going to bother linking it together. We're not going to give you anything to do with it. If you base your your title around having some kind of career or progression in that regard and you add content to it use it theme it put some work into it show at least that you give a shit about what you're putting in there because that's not the feeling i get um with these many books and this dlc from uh, this it really isn't we then also get some um scapes of added and a few other bits and pieces but no real major changes well apart from one and that is the fact that uh, there's a bit of a big glitch on uh, this um update um as i I'm recording this on the 27th of June, which is a Monday. They have not patched it out yet. And that basically is once you've unlocked um, menu book one and three of these new extra menus, as they're calling them, you can go back in and re-watch the little video snippet. In fact, you don't even need to re-watch it. You can start it and then go and collect the ticket again. And if you open one get the ticket, go and redeem the ticket, the roulette ticket, go to three, open it, close it, go and claim the ticket again, and you can keep doing that. You've effectively got unlimited roulette ticket fours and unlimited roulette ticket six engine swaps. Um, you can also do this with the Honda Type R one. You don't even need to go and redeem anything. You can basically just open and close it repeatedly, and uh, it will give you a... Um, Group B Renica every single time. I've got over a hundred of them. So if uh, PD ever put selling cars into the title, then bingo, we'll get a lot of money for those. Unless they find a way around that, which I strongly suspect they will. Um, so yeah, it, it's another update for um, Gran Turismo 7. It's functional, but it, it just falls so, so short of the mark yet again that it's... I want to believe that PD care, I really do, but I'm not feeling it, and I'm certainly not feeling it in this DLC at all. Um, so yeah, that's it for um, this particular video. If you found this useful, please do hit the like button, and if you want to see more content like this, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when new content gets uploaded. Thanks very much, everyone. Take care. Bye.